Well, we've hit the big one. Gimmick might be the best-known hidden gem on the Famicom, a game that sold very poorly on initial release, but has become exceedingly well-known since then. As a result, it's often the most expensive Famicom game. Forget the 10,000 yen club. Currently, a cartridge-only copy of Gimmick will run you closer to 60,000 yen. But if you don't want to pay that much, Sunsoft has reprinted Gimmick, and a PlayStation copy will only cost you... oh no... Okay, by the time this video is posted, a digital download version of Gimmick's going to be available probably for significantly cheaper than that. But Gimmick has a history of being very expensive. Gimmick is the one and only game to use the Sunsoft 5B mapper chip. It's similar to the one that Sunsoft had been using in their more advanced titles like Hebereke, but it integrated a Yamaha sound chip as well. It's not quite as powerful as the one integrated into Konami's VRC7 chip, but it does make Gimmick's music stand out. The plot of Gimmick is that a young girl is abducted in the middle of the night, and it's up to her stuffed animal to help her. That entails going through six, or is it seven, magical kingdoms. The actual name of that main character is Yume Taro, and there's no official word on what he is, so let's just go with the dinosaur. Gimmick is one of the most challenging Famicom games, and a lot of that has to do with the fairly complex movement options. If you just try to play through it straight, you might not notice them. This just looks like a side-scrolling platformer where you hit A to jump, and holding down B makes a star appear over your head that you throw when you release it. But Yume Taro can ride on most objects. If they're not spiky or have an effect like that, you can stand on them. You only get hurt if they collide with your sides. So you could ride around on enemies, but that ability to walk on top of things applies to just about everything, including your star. If you launch your star toward a wall, it's possible to quickly jump and then get on top of it. And if you've done it right, then you can use the star as a platform to get to out-of-the-way places. The way that you're moving when you release B affects how the star behaves. If you're jumping, you toss it down. If you're running forward, you toss it in a low arc. And if you're standing still, you toss it in a high arc. If a star is out there bouncing around, you can't make another star until it goes away. Slopes in Gimmick are incredibly slippery, and Yume Taro will rapidly accelerate down them. And that gives the platforming an extra little twist of challenge. Stages tend to appear to be straightforward, but have hidden nooks and crannies. Plus, most of the obstacles you'll encounter will be traps rather than enemies. One of the tougher things you'll see from bosses and mini-bosses is the ability to block your stars and you'll just have to figure out how to get your attacks over them. You start every stage with a maximum of two health, but you can collect two orange potions found on the stage, and they'll increase that length by one while refilling you to maximum. There are other potions that you can collect, and sometimes they're dropped by enemies, and sometimes they're just sitting out in the open. You can only have three of those at a time, so if you encounter one and your inventory is full, you can push it around or stand on it, but not pick it up. You rotate through what potion you're using by holding down and pressing B. And to use a potion, you hold up and press B. The red potion is a health potion that stays in your inventory, and it'll recover you to full. The bombs are explosive shots. They'll explode on contact with an enemy, or sit on the ground for a few seconds before going off. Finally, the fireball will just shoot out straight in front of you, passing through enemies. Now just completing the stages in Gimmick is pretty hard. There's a lot of things that will kill you instantly, and even if you don't die instantly, it'll take a lot of skill to just get through the game. But if you just played straight through and got to the end of the sixth land, then Yume Taro fails in his quest. Because what you really have to do is find one hidden magical item on every stage. And while these aren't the most well-hidden items in the world, you have to know that they're there and what they're used for. They require a fair amount of skill to get, and they're always just off the path that you want. Like here on stage two, you've got this cannon, and if you push it off the ledge so that it lands on the lower platform, then hop on the cannonball as it fires, 
and ride it all the way back across the entire stage, you'll get into a little box with the item. Fortunately, you have infinite continues in Gimmick. Unfortunately, using a continue removes all of the items you've collected. So if you continue on levels 1 through 6, you can't access the 7th stage. You start out with 3 lives and can earn more by getting points. And while it's not hard to get over that 10,000 point threshold for an extra life, Gimmick is a game where it will drain those away fast. You have to master the game if you are going to get through the whole thing. While it didn't sell well at the time, Gimmick has gained a reputation over the years as one of the masterpieces of the Famicom. But it did have one significant fan back in the early 90s. A young employee of HAL Laboratory by the name of Masahiro Sakurai saw the game and drew some inspiration from its cute character and complex stage design when creating his own platformer, though Sakurai's game was much easier. Gimmick never received a sequel, but besides the re-releases, there's a very recent remake for arcades. Gimmick Exact Mix is almost identical to the original, just with a graphics overhaul, a widescreen view, and a timer for stage completion. Obviously, I consider Gimmick to be one of the high points of the Famicom. If you look back at the beginning, it's amazing that the system can do this at all. And it's an excellent game. While it's demanding and challenging, the stages are also fairly short, and the skill ceiling is really high. You could play normally, or you could do awesome tricks jumping off your star. It's one of the more rewarding Famicom games to play in that way. It's all around one of the best though you'll probably want to just get the new re-release instead of pay for the original cartridge. <laughs>